Good morning, everybody. Today's uh, Wednesday, the 24th of July, and I'm going to be translating uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO, the president. Um, so without further ado, here we go. Okay. Pues hoy como ayer, so today, as yesterday, we're going to be dedicating the uh, press circle preguntas. to ask questions and answer questions to clarify all your doubts or that exist. Este es muy This dialogue is very important. Por acá. Let's start over here. Eh, Regarding what happened last night in the Congress of Baja California, I know you've been very uh, prudent regarding the decision to extend the period from two to five years from the governor. But what is your position regarding that, that all these other politicians have uh, uh, well, it's a matter that needs to be dealt with the Congress, and the authority needs to resolve it. I don't know if they're um, informing properly regarding this matter. Independently, though, from the amplification of the uh, given time para el cumplimiento de la función del nuevo to accomplish the function of the new governor, it should be said que that they approved esta medida this measure todos los partidos. all the parties Empezando por starting with el PAN. the PAN It's one of the parties. Entonces, ahora, so now, en un doble discurso, in a double discourse, con una doble moral, with a double moral, como such as suele suceder, it sometimes veces, happens, porque el conservadurismo, due to conservatism, que no that will not incluye solo include only uh, a pan, but it's more ample than that. It has as its doctrine hypocrisy. That's its true doctrine. Entonces, ahora, so therefore, now, quienes, este, votaron, those that voted por esta medida, for this measure están en contra are against it. Lo único the only thing que quisiera that I would like es de que no is that they're not eh, eh, involve me in this matter. Porque Because buscan they seek to blame me for everything. And I told them no tuve nada que ver. I had nothing to do. Ya no es el de antes It is not the time such as before that these decisions las were taken by desde arriba, from above, gente, from the president. O eran al y Or él they were la orden. consulted to the president and he gave the order. Al to the Secretary of Government, Pregúntenle he a la Olga Sánchez Cordero asked Olga Sánchez Cordero si recibió la orden del presidente para if she received the order from the President to do this, reforma o acuerdo. this reform or agreement. Eso ya se terminó. These things have ended. So therefore, I do not give an opinion because of that precisely. 
in order that I don't give a las malas interpretaciones. Uh, people hacen, opportunity to give bad interpretations. Pues extremo, but it seems to me to be the extreme of hypocrisy that now haciendo they are un cuestionamiento uh, questioning sobre este regarding asunto, this matter cuando, when nuestros opositores our opposers fueron los que were the ones that approved it esta decisión. this decision Porque si because hubiese, eh, sido la organización, if it had been the organization que nos apoyó, that uh, uh, supported us or the one we belong to then we then imagine but as, a, as it appears or as it happens maybe the people didn't know because everything is out of, taken out of context so let's see how many deputies are in the Congress, uh, local Congress of uh, Baja California. There's very few uh, municipalities. No, we can figure out. No, we have to figure out how many there is. And from what party? What party they There's 25 in total. But how many are from the Morena party? Three. How much are PRI? I ask so that we can understand. Because if here we don't know it, imagine the people, although the people now these days know more than us, they know everything. There's five of the three. How many are the fun? Six. Six. Twelve. Well, six left the party. No, 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 no. Estoy hablando no. De cómo I'm talking about how they voted. ¿Por qué no mientras seguimos? Why don't you check while we sí. continue? Porque because a eso me refiero, that's what I'm referring to informa, when we have no information que se editorializa, that they editorialize bueno o malo. they just say good or bad y lo primero que hay que hacer es, pues, but the first thing you must do is a de ahí, check it out and then you can discuss pues, it ya elaborar, then you work on it <laughs> it means you got to work on it and editorialize and, and give your opinion but you can't give an opinion if you don't have the information if you don't even have that basic information so that's one matter but let's say now that we're here talking about this matter about these conservatives that they think that we are like they they are saying that I want to certify the signature of the document that I let you see here that where I committed to no reelection. to no reelection. So there's the document. And I'll certify it today. And what I'm asking you to my opposers is that they approve the initiative to revoke uh, 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 presidency. Vamos a leerlo, ¿no? So let's read it. Bájalo. 
lowered a little bit. A lo largo de más de 20 años, so as in the last 20 years, he declarado I have declared ocasiones, on several occasions que de a un that as if I, if I a la went into a public a, a position, I would submit myself to revocation. Entonces, so as they did it at the federal district in the three uh, campaigns posteriorly. So I reiterated this commitment and this, in the, so this way in the middle of my, in, 20, in my term, uh, 221, they will have a consultation to ask the citizens if they want me to continue governing or do they want me to end my term or renounce my term. Certainly, I, I was, I was uh, chosen to take a, a six-year term but according to our Carta uh, the people have at any time uh, the, any time to change the form of government. That is to say, the people puts you in and the people takes you away. Or gives and the people take away. In order to comply with this commitment, I gave the Congress an initiative con uh, of constitutional reform in order to take into practice this uh, reform. And, uh, but, it's, but my conservative uh, counterparts they think that I am like them because their true doctrine is hypocrisy and they yell out that that it, the, the plan to submit myself to revocation has the intention or covers the uh, uh, plan to re-elect myself in 2024. Due to this uh, unfounded uh, thing, it is necessary to re reiterate my conviction uh, of Democratic Conventions to say the first thing, I am from Madera Party, and the principles, and they have no no re-election. I am inspired by the ideals and convictions, not ambition to power. I repeat, I am not a vulgar, ambitious man. Three. I believe that power only has sense and becomes a virtue when you put yourself at service of other people, number four. I consider that with six years, it's more than enough to, um, to remove uh, corruption and impunity and convert uh, Mexico into a just republic and fraternal. I have no doubt that we will have enough time to consume between all of us and in a, a peaceful manner the fourth transformation of the public life of the country. As a consequence, I reaffirm that I am not in agreement with re-election and that never, under no circumstances, would I attempt to put myself in charge of, because that would mean to go against the Constitution, but also to be a traitor to my principles. And uh, deny uh, my uh, honesty, 
which is the most valuable thing I have in life. What I estimate or consider the most important thing. So please, uh, conservatives, so that you will know I will abandon my presidency uh, according to the what the law says, the, the Constitution allows. And 2024, I will leave back to Palenque. But I will tell you this with sincerity that I desire with all my heart with all my convictions and with all my enthusiasm and with my whole soul that what I have gained by that time when I leave would be very difficult to revert. I will not leave it easy for you and that the country will not return to the uh, disgusting, difficult, sad times where the mafia of power was dominant. I let people know about this in March, on the 19th, but now the, the newspaper of the conservatives and amongst others, and the reforma is saying that me estoy that I am me estoy para atrás. that I'm a, a retracting it or that I'm uh, backing out. So we're going to have a notary public come here so I can sign que no soy that I am not a partisan de la for re-election. No I don't believe in that. ¿Sí? Yes. So that there is no doubt. And so in that way, we will continue to move forward to all the campaigns of uh, defamation and lies. I will always. It is part of the transformation. Because this was not actually what was politically correct. Entonces, so therefore, cambios, these are changes importantes. that are important. Muy bien. Pero, Very pero well. Ya, a ver, ¿cómo, cómo? Repite. Del Congreso de Baja California. Sí. From the Congress, son, eh, 12, 12 are PAN, voted for PAN. ¿Cómo se compone? Ah, ¿cómo se conforman? How they perfect. Three Morena, one of the Movimiento Ciudadano, one of the Partido del Trabajo, and three are independent. How did they vote? So they voted unanimously. Un partido. Despacito. Del que tiene más es el PAN con doce. ¿Cuántos? Doce. Doce. Y luego. So twelve PAN. Doce del PAN. Cinco del PRI. Cinco del PRI. Tres de Morena. Tres de Three Morena. Morena. Uno de Movimiento Ciudadano. Uno del Movimiento of, Ciudadano. Uno uh, del PT. Uno del PT. Tres independientes. Tres independientes. Así está. Ok. So that's how it is. Bueno, ya. En materia, eh, la verdad que yo no este, estaba enterado. I just wasn't sure of what, what the positions were. That's why I needed to look. And that's why I was. And I didn't even know how they voted. Intuyo. But. Porque tengo un tinto certero. I have intuition. Y conozco muy bien a los conservadores. And I know the conservatives very well. En Estados Unidos. In the U.S. Se anunció de gobierno. They made an announcement that the government. Que tiene radares en los Estados Unidos para. That they were going to be rounding up to deport Mexicans. De hecho, publicamos hoy que ya se está preparando una carta gigantesca, 20 mil metros cuadrados, para tenerlos en Ciudad Juárez, en el puente. 
So they want to hold them between the two countries in 20, on upper 20,000. So the youth spoke in, a, uh, in defense of the uh, Mexican in the U.S. And what about the wall that the threatening to build has not really advanced very long? So can you talk to us if, if you're going to uh, be meeting with Honduran president and when? So we're going to continue with with the same politics of uh, ordering migration and respect human rights and insist in attending causes and to support productive uh, behaviors in the origins, uh, places of origin of the immigrant so that they will have opportunities for work and they will be well-being and health and that migration be optional, not forced. That continues and I inform you that I am going to be meeting this Saturday with the president of Honduras in Minatitlán, in Minatitlán, Veracruz. In Veracruz. That's the information I have from the Secretary of External Relations or Foreign Relations. Because we are working in the in the support of um, productive activities in the um, uh, countries of Central America. We want to support and continue to support that the United States help the Central American countries and that there be investment in order that the people will not be left without um, and that there be advancement uh, with this. Or um, the meeting with Honduras. And that's basically what we're doing. And the others, uh, we've um, uh, tried to maintain good relations with the United States. And we've gained it. There's an attitude of respect towards Mexico on the behalf of the United States. And we are now waiting that they be approved the treaty the commercial treaty with the United States and with Canada. It is very important to us that in the United States the congressmen approve it or this treaty. We already did what we needed to do and it depends on them basically. And I'm uh, hopeful that that the later it'll be a September and it be approved in the United States. Why do I mix one thing with another? Because the signature for the ratification on, on behalf of uh, the United States and Canada will, will help us a lot. That there be more confidence in Mexico and that there be more investments for the country in order that 
tener más crecimiento económico y más we empleos. have more growth and work. Eso and that is bastante. what is very important to us. Y vamos bien. And vamos we are doing camino. well. We're eh, doing on a good, uh, on a good road. Yo tengo información. I have information. Que, eh, los legisladores en Estados Unidos that the legislators in the United States are looking con buenos ojos with good eyes la aprobación the approval of the treaty. Hay diferencias porque es There are differences natural, because it's natural. Pero However, están actuando todos de manera responsable. All of them are acting in a responsible manner. Que and they know that after so many years, this commercial treaty would not be able to be canceled, este this a treaty. No sería and it would not be convenient, ni para México, ni para neither Unidos, for Mexico ni para or for the United States or for Canada. Y esto, so eh, va más allá, o está por encima. it's uh, de las like over the top regarding the political or electoral Que se puedan, um, that may be eh, presented in the Canada, U.S. Or, in or, or in Canada or in Mexico. Yeah. Siempre, Always eh, las instituciones that the institutions, democratic, they need to think en el in the general interest más que en los intereses partidistas. more than partisan uh, interests. Creo que se va so a therefore, I believe the treaty will go through, and this Unidos. speaks very well. Muchas gracias, Presidente Antonio López Thank you, Mr. President. Eh, me gustaría abordar un tema en I would like to al, ask a matter regarding the <coughs> law of uh, Republican austerity. <coughs> Something about there's something being restructured, they want to know if it's true, or if there's a platform. They have no authorized information. Yes, we have not finished uh, making all the adjustments. We are doing that. El lunes tengo on Monday, una reunión con la Secretaría de I have a reunion or meeting with the Secretary of State of Hacienda and the Cabinet Tuesday so that we can make the final re, uh, revision to see a, what the final structure will be regarding the application of the law of austeri, uh, Republican austerity. And we will present uh, the information of how the structure was before and how it will be now. And even as a, an example, there is not just these uh, uh, drivers that they need to maintain their jobs. No, este como choferes de funcionarios. Not as drivers of uh, businessmen, doctors, en otra actividad. any other activity. Porque ganan poco. Because they earn very little. Eh, personal, son trabajadores their de personnel, base. their uh, base workers. Quedan todavía and there's still several. Llamadas some calls that and uh, meetings that have to be, but there's a resistance 
no se cancelen. That they not be canceled. Es lo que pasa en todos los cambios. That's what happens with all the changes. Pues viene, eh, That's why recordar it's good to remember as to why se le llamaba they used to call conservadores conservatives reaccionarios. reactionaries es la reacción because it's the reaction los of, to the changes to oppose themselves, to resist. Bueno, so we have those resistances interior. on the interior. Este, y and y andan, they, uh, they go thinking que van a burlar, that they're going to make fun of of the norms. What about the coordinators that resist and, and they continue doing that with, because we're going to elaborate the budget. They supposedly are not supposed to exist anymore. So how are they going to charge? I'm referring to the ones above. We said no, no to the directors. Why? Because they already had a structure of secretaries, subsecretaries, director general, chief of the department, chief of the union. And when you had a lot of money, that's when they received most money due to the prices of uh, high gasoline during Calderon. It grew in an unmeasured way. The bureaucracy, the golden bureaucracy. So therefore, they created these new plazas of directors for the corrupt. Just imagine, if you have a director, why do you need an adjunct uh, director? So what happened with these directors that were adjunct were of the highest. They were the most elevated. So it's not new that we question at, at its time this decision. I even wrote about it. And we committed ourselves to get rid of it. All this unnecessary bureaucracy that costs the people so much to maintain the government. It was a government that was useless and needed to be supported. That's what you need to take into consideration. That is why this uh, adjustment that is being taken in but there's not, it, uh, there's always resistances, but little by little, we're going to be understanding that there needs to be austerity. There should not be excesses, waste. There shouldn't be rich government with poor people. What the heck just happened? Sal de sin censura con Vicente Serrano desde Chicago. Presidente, hace unos días entrevistamos afuera de Palacio Nacional a Santiago Nieto, director de la Unidad de Inteligencia Financiera, y le preguntamos si está investigando desde su trinchera a los presidentes Salinas de Gortari y Peña Nieto. The ex-presidents Salinas de Gortari y Peña Nieto for presumptuously being involved in the presumption. Uh, uh, laundering of money. 
And now they blocked eight um, uh, frankincense. If the ex-presidents are being signaled, why are they not being investigated? Can you give orders so that they can investigate the uh, accounts of Peña, Nieto, and Salinas de Gortari? The Vicente Serrano asked you regarding uh, the report of attention of the citizens. There's a lot of people, but we want to know how are you doing? What's the status? What's the report that you have? And know how many cases have you received? And how many cases have you given solution to? Because it's a commitment by your people so that the they can give a report because the people have a lot of hope and they come here every day to Palacio to let you know their uh, questions. So, so let's have uh, the lady from uh, Citizen Help. Uh, she's here. Let, let's let her explain. So he can form Today to all. We're attending, as you know, from 5 in the morning, taking care of the people that come. And they're all welcome. I spoke to them and let me clarify first, because I was not prepared. But the attention for a citizen and conviction is that we need to listen to the people. It's the most important thing. We're not separate officials. We're the part where we need to know what they're saying, what they're thinking, the citizens. So most of the, the uh, claims that the people give us here are the same as what they're asking when they're talking to the president. And we've attended as according to, as of the 30th of June, uh, was the number of people that have been assisted, that have come here. 70,000 people are the ones we received. That's about 450 a day. And we have about approximately 600 groups that come, probably five groups a day for different soliciting. All of it needs to, everyone is attended and we all deal with them. And we uh, decide what, who's going to deal with it. Everything's um, addressed. Data. Sometimes we sometimes they forget to give us their contact data, so it's hard for us to find them. So it's very important to put data in and to do it respectfully. The doors are open, but please let's do it respectfully. That's the way we want. That, that's how we want to treat you. And the responses. As of June, we had a meeting with the responsible parties of every uh, company or area and we have around 48%. And, and the meeting was precisely to find the way to make it a lot faster. So we have it in a system. They call it uh, a system integral for responding to the people or the citizens. But they're not used to the system. But so there should be a response real soon. And we have some very important cases that require a lot more agility. And it has to, everything has to be with, um, has to do with health. And the people comes with a lot of needs. And we have to treat them directly. And we always try to find them help to the proper departments. Another uh, matter that we talked about was the uh, Infonavit, the quantity of people that are having difficulty with Infonavit was really big in the beginning. So 
this is a new solution. And the matters are so varied that it's difficult to just, it's like it means some that have a medical urgency and, and some that have been 20 to 30 years without being resolved. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with. So they didn't used to have a place to give their point of view, so there's things that are way behind. All these citizens that are coming in requires a lot of patience because we don't just receive the document and deal with it. <coughs> Sometimes it takes time. But like, for example, today at 6, 6 a.m., even before I came here, we'd attend uh, 29 people in one hour and only one group besides whatever uh, waiting now. But little uh, uh, data, so I reiterate, we receive everybody that wants to come and be listened to. We have open doors. We have a question outside uh, the palace. A lot of people have told us with their hand, paper in hand, that they send them to the company and the, those companies don't recognize the paper and they send them back. So this is a red a flag because they're not giving solutions to a lot of people that have a great need. So what are you going to do in this case so that that paper you give to the company will make it valid? And we're in the process of that. And there are some cases that the companies did not want to take it. There's a lot of resistance. There's still a lot of resistance. So we talk with a level and we you know going down and down. So we have to keep repeating and talking with everyone. But those that come, we will attend to them immediately. And we're going to look for the response. A lot of the a lot of the times the response is not what they would like or they're not completely positive because some of them are not they're not like unfounded and sometimes there's other ways for them to deal with it and we're in the middle of that process so that you know there's going to be a response and they call her Leti. That's a complaint department. <laughs> so a reflection regarding that matter. When the apostle of democracy, Francisco Madero, confronted Porfirio Diaz, he, he used a, a biblical phrase that said the people of Mexico has hunger and hunger and thirst for justice. And that's how we are. We still are that way. It was the people were abandoned completely. And now our purpose is to, to bring forth a converse, um, a new revolution to, to make a change, a conversion. But we need to ap apply a method of attention to the people, to the demands of the people, to the petitions of the people, the, the desires of the people. So I would say to you that there's two ways to get attention. One is one that has to do with with the actions of bienestar collective. For example, that they uh, with one program that they attend eight million of, of adults, older adults all the older adults with one program. Which means an investment of 110 
a million people. But that means, and that's what's most important, a support for a sector of the population, which is a collective support, general, universal. The other part, to support poor students with grants. And there we talk about 10 million. Supporting youth that don't have jobs or study. So there we're talking about, as of now, 700,000. So that's like that. So we can talk about the workers that two million of them, of producers, little producers or small, are now receiving help or support. In general, I consider that of every 10 homes of the country, now they are receiving help, they are being attended to, at least 50% of the homes, perhaps with a little support that one, because they have an older adult, or maybe because they have a, a child that is getting a grant, or there's a child that is incapacitated, or it's a producer of the, of the, of the fields that is receiving help, that has a resource, or it's a young person that is now contracted in the program of constructing the future. So according to my calculations, we are approximately 18 million of beneficiaries with all the actions. So in the case of the population that is the poorest, the indigenous, we are at about eight out of 10 homes. So therefore, all these things, we have it ordered in orderly. And we know how things are being distributed, how the funds are being distributed. So that's one way to do it, which includes also that there be employment, that they uh, make roads, the general benefits. And the other thing is the demands that are more personalized. The people want that justice, like Leti mentioned here, that everything that is received from the people, the demands or com complaints from mothers that come to uh, support because they have their children that are in prison or the sick that need to be attended to. Uh, requests or applications for uh, de things dealing with land and er uh, situations where uh, they had, uh, uh, what do you call it, flooding or help for, uh, they were victims of some injustice or they were removed from their homes, all types of things. So therefore, that's the other part. So it takes turns to the different secretaries, and they have orders to listen to the people. But they're returning them. 
Yes, but there's an indication that they listen to them, to the people. And that they demonstrate that they are sensitive because there are those that don't want to listen and the people bother them. In fact, as the, as the government became divorced from the people, a public servant would re, uh, re, get away from the people. And he thought that his function was to be in his office and to attend to the things with papers and not talk to the people. And there's public servants that actually get upset when they talk to them, when they are exposing the, the problems. They have no patience to listen to people. But anyway, every time we can, we will listen but lots of times, only with listening, the people feel relieved just to have someone to listen. So I, I see this, and I come back from a meeting, and they say, strongly, with reason. But they, maybe a child is missing, or they were victims of an injustice. And they say strongly to me, and they cry, and I listen to them. And they claim to me, and at the end, all right, I said, let's see what we can do. Let's see who can attend to them or who can respond to them in the meeting. And afterwards, as they pass us, they take a picture with me. Yes. They, they, they ask. And then that's it. That's all it is. To know how to listen to the people. That was the many virtues of he would cross his arms and listen. One time in a road to of Oaxaca I was with an extraordinary uh, a newspaper person, Martínez de la Vega. Martínez de la Vega. Francisco. Francisco. Y él narra eso. And he narrated que this, hay unas mujeres, that there were some women in the road, y lo paran, and they stopped him. Se baja, he gets out. Escucha, he listens. Y viene un ayudante, and an uh, uh, assistant que, comes. They kept repeating what they were telling them. It was regarding some pensions for their husbands that had participated in, and they had taken away their uh, retirement. So they kept repeating and he kept listening. As always, they they, there was some people being nosy or busybodies. One of them said to her, or him, yes, that's enough. What they want is, they want the pensions, right? That's all. He, just, he was trying to help. And then the general turned to see them. So then he didn't talk to him the whole road because of his imprudence, because he wouldn't, didn't want to listen. There's many demands. 
or solicitations. How many have been attended? 72,000. So that's, that's a lot of demands. But we're going to go little by little. So regarding the, the case of the bank, the fiscal general or district attorney general, it's regarding the case of the ex-president. I have sustained that if it is necessary, if the people solicit it or the sector of the population, once we have clarified uh, Article 35 of the Constitution, we would consult. That's what I plan. And I am letting you know ahead that I am a part of this, a, a final point. I don't like to look back. I like to look forward. And only in the cases where there's processes that are open, if it is uh, proven, that there is claims that were being held back, then in those cases, regarding the uh, executive, I will give it its course so that the proper authority, or in this case, as it's occurring, the district attorney. That's the instruction we have. If the fiscal or district attorney asks us for information, uh, the in, for financial intelligence, how it happened in some cases. The instruction of Santiago Neto is to give them everything. And what's more, that any uh, request that is made be attended to, and all that is presumed that could mean a crime. It needs to be uh, told to the uh, proper authorities. But of course, uh, protecting the due course and, and not affecting the dignity of the people, acting, acting seriously and responsibly. Acerca de la creación de esta filial de la CFE que va a dotar de internet a estas comunidades que, bueno, todavía no... Regarding the uh, internet being provided to all the communications, when do you think you're going to initiate this plan and when do you project it uh, that people can count with internet? The company is this constituted and is approved by the Council of Administration of the Federal Commission of Electricity. And the uh, company is called Commission, uh, Federal Commission of Electricity, Telecommunications, and Internet for All. The purpose is that, that they give this service of Internet to all the uh, towns of Mexico. The first step was the constitution of the company. The second step was the uh, solicitation of the concession that is being prepared because they're on vacation. Two members of the Institute of Telecommunications. So therefore, when they return from their vacations, of officials. They deliver the um, solicitation. I believe that next week, and that we have talked with them, and also we are taking forth this procedure and consulting that institute that is autonomous and that is the one that is in charge 
otorgar las concesiones of giving the concession and to regulate all that is reg uh, that is uh, related no to telecommunications. It's not like before. La Secretaría de Comunicaciones y Transportes expedía las concesiones. It used to expedite the concessions. Now this institute is independent. Desde luego, but of course, hay, um, cooperación, there's cooperation, contado, and we've counted on el apoyo with the support de este instituto, of this institute because it is, con respeto, we have acted with respect, uh, respect to its autonomy, los hemos estado consultando, and we've been consulting them Para, eh, in order to definir muy bien las características de conformidad define very well the characteristics de, de, that de, needs to be reunited empresa. with the new press Por ejemplo, una or company. One of the characteristics, for example, is that we will start to give the service de la periferia al centro. from the periphery to the center. That is to say, those that do not attend the uh, companies of telecommunication where there's no service. I was, as I'm going to say it now, uh, I was in Chicontepec, Veracruz, Veracruz, on Sunday. In Aguasteca. In Aguasteca. It's called Chicontepec, and it's known as the Balcón of the Aguasteca. It's an important municipality. All the municipals of that region, to give more information that there is petroleum in that region, they developed the uh, for, uh, petroleum exploration before the expropriation. It's part of the uh, uh, well-known golden uh, waistband uh, girdle. But more than the uh, petroleum, it's fertile land with water. And besides that, it has lots of cultural uh, uh, strength with the original people, the indigenous, very hard workers. It's a municipal that's strategic. We went on Sunday in the plaza, and they came from all the uh, lands. And lots of people, besides the ones that assisted to our act, in Chicontepec, in Chicontepec no hay servicio there is no service de telefonía móvil. of mobile phones, cell phones. Lo escucharon? Did you hear me? No hay internet. There's no internet. Estoy hablando de la I'm talking about municipal. the municipal head. Eso that is, es lo que sucede. is what happens en when, when 75% of our national territory. So how are you going to make sure that it, it, internet gets to all of Mexico? I believe that by next year, we will all have una etapa. a first phase vamos a trabajar, because we're going to work eh, prisa, with speed and we're going to put the installations in, red, all the web, fiber, fiber optic from the federal uh, electrical department and the company will start a, a cabo, to take forth all its works. It's a company that has uh, no plans to become wealthy. It's to provide the service. If they charge, 
it'll be something very minimal just to guarantee the maintenance because it should not be an expense it's an investment if we are able to communicate with 75% of the territory with internet it will be a revolution of the consciences. That is why we decided to make this company. Because the particular people were trying to make, uh, didn't want to make a business. So all the service was concentrated in the big uh, cities. And they abandoned the rest of the country. That is the purpose of the program. And we're going to comply with that plan. But I imagine it's going to help our health for diagnosticians via internet. And sometimes they can do consultations via the uh, internet, the sending of analysis of the test the studies like labs like in the areas that are very far to when they're in uh, centers for medical health recommendations to specialists in the case of a medicine all these things that should be part of material education and imagine how many times they spoke about the uh, systems, computers, uh, communication, internet in the schools, but it was a fraud because they didn't exist. We didn't have the, the web for communication. How are they going to function on the platforms of teams of that purpose? What will help us a lot for the dispension, for the resources and the funds so that they won't use cash so that when a card, they can pay their, receive their benefits. It's a web of communication that's important. What about the program of maintenance? and the infrastructure. How much time do you estimate it will be producing uh, gas in three years? It's already getting higher, the production of gasoline since we started. We have more production. I don't know if we have a, the slide of, uh, regarding gas, gas production and refinery. When Octavio came, he brought some uh, slides. Look, we'll show you the graphs. See how much is being produced of gas, and it's increased the volume and production because they're intervening with the refinery. They were at 30% of their capacity, and now they've been increasing to their capacity of ref uh, refining. We, and they're going to continue. We're authorized for this year 12,500 million pesos to do that, and it will be repeated and for the next year as well, same amount of investment. And the plan for the media is that we will gain auto self-sufficiency in production of gasoline mo by modernizing the refineries and uh, operating the new refineries of those 
consideramos and we consider that for that will be a, a 600 to 8,000 ba barrels daily of gasoline, which is what we consume. And we came to, when we first started, we were producing around 200,000 barrels and buying 70% of the gasoline that we consume. So we're going advancing in that sense. Thank you. Cinco, nos vamos. Buenos días, señor presidente. De Urbana Barrera, Diego, este, ovaciones. Quisiera regresar un poquito a lo de Atención Ciudadana. I'm going to return a little bit to the citizen. Eh, recientemente, Recently, usted fue a Morelos. You, you went to Morelos. A la gira de la, de la huesca. To the meeting of the huesca. Los gasoductos. Regarding the gas tax. Una persona, and a person came, came to you. Carta. And they gave you a letter. Esa información después ya llegó aquí también a atención. And that information later was brought out here. Uno de esos casos que hice. It has to do with one of those cases that has been waiting 20 years. Personas que tienen prisión. That have people in prison. Or 20 years in their case has been ignored. De preso político. It's been a political situation in justice. But I want to concrete of the case Jose Ocampo, they jailed him because he didn't want to co cooperate with lots of mi millions of dollars for a campaign for Vicente Fox. And he's been struggling for years and years, and he's went to several governments, and he came to you guys. And I want to ask you regarding that case, when do you think that you are going to be free for those people, 400 people that might be our political prisoners? When do you think they can be free with their jobs and all their benefits be restored and in Sina? When do you calculate that they will, they will be free. And the second thing that has to do with a citizen, a few days ago, uh, operators came from the pipes regarding the 700 pipes. And they initiated a certain, a certain, they said that that were contracted, and within five days they were, uh, and then they contracted them again, and they've kind of been, neither are they workers uh, for Pemex, nor are they for a different company. So they really have no resource and no funds. They don't have anything for safety, for uh, you know, insurance, for And they're worried because they always go in a convoy, and it's got 13 operators. Uh, and, and they have 1,600 people walking. They're worried that they're going to be substituted by operators or uh, owners of the pipes or military. So they want to know if they're going to continue with their employ or short term, so that they or they're going to be substituted by personnel, military personnel. No, what happened is, is that they contracted more than a thousand cooperators for 600 pipes that are functioning. And the program is very good. When I went to Veracruz, I found a convoy of 40 pipes from Tuxpan to San Juanico to the station, 
to the terminal of San Juanito. Está funcionando muy bien el programa. The program is functioning very well. Muy bien manejado, operado. It's very well managed and operated by the Secretary of Defense. DN3 and it's TN3 que no nos falte. so that we not fail uh, with, no the nos with the gasoline. We will not let it happen again. Este, lo que sucedió, what happened before de que nos quedamos, that we were left de without enough ya, gasoline en in, in, the, in the city estado. and in other states. Because we have now more than 600 pipes. So now, if there's sabotage, that unfortunately there hasn't been any, I will let you know that, that in the morning they found a, a clandestine uh, take, taking of gas here in this area. But now, Yesterday, it was lowered to 400,000 or 4,000 barrels of theft. When there used to be 80,000 barrels daily, or in pipes, oh my gosh, <laughs> they would steal 800. And then 40. <laughs> it's still open, but it's no less. So we no longer have the risk gasoline. that they will leave us without gas este plan because we have this plan and it's functioning very well. La que tengo the information that I have is que that eh, no se they didn't bien. behave properly. Les gusta que yo use they, la palabra, they, no like this, bien, pero eso no es, they don't like me to say the word that they're not behaving well, bien. but they have not behaved este, well. Y es, este, todos aportarnos mal, and o todos aportarnos either mal. we're all going to act right or we're all going to act wrong. Les decía yo que I used to say calle 13, ¿no? there's a uh, jail in uh, 13th Street. Aportarnos mal, and they used to say, aportarnos mal, aportarnos mal. And now we're in a time that say, aportarnos bien, which means let's act right. It's not because of me. It's not because of the government. It means to behave well with society, with the nation, to be good citizens. Acts of it non indiscipline, or they wouldn't come on time. They wouldn't show up. And other things. Not everyone. I'm talking about. So that's why, according to the law, it was, they were liquidated. Because we, we cannot permit irresponsibility. I'm talking about, unfortunately, about a small group. So they are within their rights to go to the proper channels to look for justice, but it also means transporting gasoline, and it means it's dealing with, with an activity that's risky. So I received the information, a report, yesterday, from the Secretary of Defense. It told me the explanation, and I'm in agreement with that. Because otherwise, we're not going to change things. Because everyone has to behave properly. And it is not true 
that we're going to substitute with military. It's just that the number of conductors, a group, did not uh, comply with their responsibilities. And that's why they took the decision that according to the law, they needed to be removed. But if they're not happy and they think it was not appropriate or just, go to the proper authorities. So in the case of we've advanced a lot uh, regarding uh, political prisoners, prisoners that were in unjustly incarcerated, but we have not advanced sufficiently because it's like that elephant that has thrown himself down and he's rheumatoid. The documentation of the, to liberate someone or the steps you have to take that was in, unjustly put into prison are so complicated and they implicate uh, a series of, of resources that has to do with the justice power, it has to do with the attorney general, we liberated some uh, teachers from Oaxaca and they appealed and now they are trying to put them back in jail. So therefore, there's the truth is there is lots of people that are innocent in jail. Those that don't have the money to pay for the bonds because they're too poor, the ones that have never been sentenced and they're being held there, the ones that are ill, the elderly, there's women in there that are more than 80 years old. And I've been given the instruction that they need to attend to these cases. However, they're inertias, custom. that exist. So we have to advance in that. And I've been reminding the Secretary of Government, and I'm going to continue to do so, that she needs to find a way, a legal way, that they could consider they can, that they can get some data so that I can look at them myself. So I can see if I can send an initiative to the Congress defining very well the cases, the general characteristics, so that they can, in the, in the, in the, in that, framework, they can come out of prison. And that's what we're working on. Constantly, I'm asking information uh, regarding that for getting advance notice. But it's not that Olga, the uh, attorney, or Julio doesn't, but it's just that it's very complicated. to remove the process 
en muchos casos fabricados. Because in many cases they were fabricated. Uh, complaints that were uh, fabricated because they were trying to do get something done. De consigna. On consignment. Antes, whereas before they used to put a paper in the, on the computer and write a, a letter. And they used to put all the uh, codes in it. And they would supposedly make it like it was real. But it was fake. So it goes through the process and goes forward. And they go to jail. So then how do you get them out? Because you can't find the procedure. So that's what we're working on. Of course, we're being careful of to not that they be imprisoned, that they committed uh, crimes that were grave. Because we can't do that either. But there's a lot of people that are innocent that committed no crime because they're in a situation that merits to be outside for disease, because they're poor, because they have nothing to do with, you know, to buy an attorney due to their age. Some, I have the case of a lady that's 85 years old, and it's here in the city of Mexico. So, of course, an old lady, would she be able to reoffend? It's not possible. So we'll be looking at that. Two more and then we're done. Politico.mx para preguntarle qué información tiene sobre las denuncias hechas por parte de la Unidad de Inteligencia Financiera de la Secretaría de Hacienda contra Carlos Romero de Champs. No so they're asking about the complaint against Carlos Romero de Champs. What information do they have on him? And that in the last few days, que la licenciada Olga Sánchez Cordero podría abandonarse GOP. De hecho, este tema causó este un poco de confusión con Porfirio Muñoz Ledo durante una conferencia, el cual este, lo tuvo que aclarar a través de las benditas redes sociales, como usted le dice. ¿Nos podría decir eh, por qué tanto ruido en torno de la Secretaría de Gobernación? Y ¿Why is there such trouble usted, with no sé internal si uh, pues, Secretary of Governing? Una nueva baja de su gobierno. También para preguntarle por último, presidente, si usted ve bien que Martí Batres y Porfirio Muñoz Ledo queden otra vez al frente de las Mesas directivas de el Senado y San Lázaro, respectivamente. No me voy a contestar una, porque las otras este, no me corresponden, pero una sí. I can ask, answer eh, one of your questions, the other ones don't. Contento. I'm very happy with the work que está, that, uh, eh, la Secretaría de Gobernación. that the Secretary of Governation is doing. That's not a problem. Que, that it is, she is an extraordinary uh, worker. And she has lots of experience in everything. She is a woman with convictions, defender of women, and a very hard worker. Just imagine that every day, since before 6 in the morning, she's at the cabinet of security. So we're very happy. And, and we don't want her to leave. It's not like other cases where they would like, <laughs> we would like. No, 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 no I'm not going to say anything. The ones that are there, the ones that come, 
tiempo atrás that have been there from times before este, que no comparten, that don't share the project of the new reform. They're not in favor of the fourth transformation, that they would like to continue the old way. Well, in an act of honesty, they should just say, I'm going to leave. This is not what I want. I'm not in uh, agreement with doing this. And, and they're not work workers because you could say that this that they live from that no they could go work in a bank or accounting give classes in a university they could be in a good economic level. They have good income. And they char charge quite a bit for the college. But that's not the case from the of the... So where did they get these rumors? Because there's adversaries that are disconcerted and bothered. I don't know why. If we have been doing this for years, acting the same way, what, what can we do? What if we came here and changed? Did we not say for years that our principal problem of Mexico was corruption? Did I not say for years that we needed to have a Republican austerity? Did, did I not say for years that the neoliberal model was no good? So what are they surprised about? Now that I am Look, imagine this. There is a business negotiation because according to them, we, they accused us in some contracts of constructing the gas ducts, say for example, this matter. Well, according to them, they, we abused. Let's not talk about the legality of that because the contracts weren't even signed by the council or the federal. Nobody signed it. The director didn't even sign it. They were just lower functionaries. Because they were ordered to, to do that. So now we start looking for an agreement. Because the tariffs that they want to charge to the electricity is too high. Constantly, the neoliberals are looking for globalization. For the idea of globalization. So, if we were going to do that, we would be looking to standardize. What does that mean, standardize? To charge the same for the service, for the banking, for the tariffs. We're going to look for that you charge same in the U.S. as in uh, and Germany like is near to what they pay to standardize because it's a world that's interrelated uh, commercially. And as a result, 
that here, the normal and the free trade was applied in a very peculiar way. Like, and so we have to pay more for all the services from the banks due to the contracting of services like gas than in other places. So what are they planning? Is that to say that we're not going to comply with the contract? It's to say it's a, that showing that we have a good disposition to lower it. You've already exceeded yourself. I don't like to say it, but they commended that they get mad. But you can't. It's the last time that I say it. Accepting a lion, lion-hearted uh, contract. Like, say, we go to the negotiation table to look for an agreement or a commitment that when you were dialoguing, there would be no demands. But one of the companies presented a demand while we were doing the dialogue, and the demand was, was supported with the declaration he wrote in the process by Dursua. That is to say, they utilize the declaration in favor for the cause, for the company. I remember when the other, there was another chronic, chronicle, uh, that was a newspaper. There was somebody named Iria working there. The notes from the Chronicle were the ones that were used or good for as evidence for the judge for my uh, getting thrown out of uh, uh, government. So therefore, we are very happy the revised the contract. We're revising the contracts collectively. And, and I cannot elaborate regarding this matter because it corresponds to PEMEX, the revision of the contract. And if it, there exists an investigation, then the, that would result the, the district attorney. That's the one I don't want to answer. All right, we see each other. Got to go. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye. Someone else will comment on it. Bye.